What's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So I'm currently building out my material library. What I noticed is I don't have a great glass shader inside of my library. So I wanted to make a video showing you how you can make a glass shader that works with Eevee inside of Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so one thing I want to note about this is if you're looking for the most realistic glass material, you're going to want to use cycles. Eevee is kind of, uh, I don't want to say cheating, but it's using a different way to calculate the way that the uh, glass works. So just note that this is really designed to help you have glass in Eevee that looks fairly realistic, but if you have like multiple different objects stacked behind each other or stuff like that, you could get some weird results. So what we want to do in this case though is we want to start by creating a shader. So we're going to jump in the shader window and we're going to add a new material. And in this case, I've added this material right here. And this material is going to be my glass material. And we can even, if we want to, go ahead and rename this um, clear glass underscore Eevee. But what I want to do is I want to start by turning my transmission all the way up on my object like this. And so I also want to turn my roughness all the way down. And so if you look at this, this is giving us kind of a glass look, but you can tell that you can't really see the objects behind this, right? So we need to turn some things on in our EV rendering settings in order for this to work. So first off, I'm going to jump over into EV. And notice how this really doesn't look like glass at all. So first off, let's jump into our EV settings um, inside of our render properties. We wanna make sure that we turn on screen, screen space reflections. We wanna make sure that we toggle on refraction. So and notice how that still hasn't changed anything in here because we need to change our material settings in order to allow glass through. So we wanna go down to our material settings. Under settings, we wanna turn on screen space refraction right here. So you wanna check this box. And so now, notice how you're suddenly getting some light transmission through your object right here. Now it's not ultra realistic and there's still some things you need to change, but now um, with those settings turned on, you're starting to get some light coming through your object. All right, so from a very simple material standpoint, this looks okay, but you've got some issues with it, right? Probably the biggest is you can't actually see the backside of the glass in here. Um, so for example, when you look through this, right, you should be able to see kind of the hump on the back side of the monkey head right here um, through the glass, but you're not currently able to actually see any of the glass in here. And so we need to add something that's gonna allow us to do that. And so what we need to do is we need to combine this shader with another shader. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a shift A, we're gonna add a transparent BSDF shader right here. And what we need to do is we need to put these two shaders together so that then you're going to be able to see the back side of this, um, the glass through the glass. And so to do that, we need to add, we're going to do a shift A and we're going to add a mix shader node right here. And so when we add the mix shader node, we want to mix the transparent BSDF with the um, principled BSDF right here. And notice how at the moment, this still isn't doing anything, right? And the reason for that is because we need to jump back into our material settings over here. And under our blend mode, we need to make sure that we change it from opaque to alpha hashed. And so when we change it from um, opaque to alpha hashed, notice how now this turns a more like transparent color right here. And you can actually kind of start seeing the glass through the glass. So it's giving us this more realistic look right here. And you can kind of adjust this by adjusting the mix shader back and forth like this. Like notice if I move this to the left right here, I can start seeing the back hump of this. So we can definitely do that, but there's a better way to mix these together, right? So what we want to do is we want to put something else into the factor in order to dictate this factor. And in this case, what we want to do is we want to add a Fresnel node. So we're going to do a shift A, click on search, and we want to type in F-R-E-S-N-E-L for Fresnel and add that right here. And so basically what this does is this uses the view angle in order to dictate in what areas light is going to refract through the object versus reflect off of the object. And so basically what this means is this means at um, at the wider angles, right? So the areas where um, you're kind of looking at the edges, for example, more light is reflected rather than refracted. So this is, this is basically going to make your glass material more realistic. So we're gonna take that Fresnel node and we're gonna plug the factor 
into the mix shader right here. And so notice how when we do this, right, we're getting a strong effect around the outside of this object um, that the light is being more like reflected back to us, where on the inside the light's kind of being bent through. But notice how this acts a lot more like an object in real life would. One thing to note about this, by the way, is if yours looks more like this, right? So if you're just getting the light kind of bending through and nothing else, what you want to do is you want to add a little bit of a solidify modifier to this object. So that's going to basically give the light something to refract through. And so if you're getting this effect right here and you're not being able to see the things up front very well, just add a little bit of a solidify modifier. So the solidify modifier is going to make your glass act more realistic. So like it has an actual thickness in real life. If you don't do that, you're just going to get kind of a not very good result right here. Um, so the solidify modifier is really going to help you get a better result. And so one thing that I have seen people do with this is you can drop a color ramp node in here. So if you want to get a little bit more control over the result that's in here, you can drop a color ramp node in here in order to adjust how strong that kind of like refraction look is. And so if you wanted to, you can kind of drag these in and adjust the color transition between them. So if you wanted to, instead of this being like a strong dark material, right, you could kind of like lighten this up. And notice how when you lighten this up, um, you're not getting as strong of like a gray refraction through here. So um, you're able to kind of control the way that those edges look with your glass just like this. And so one thing to note about this is notice how you are getting a lot of noise inside of your scene. You could either crank up your samples over here. So you could crank this up to something like 500 or 1000 and that's going to give you more samples in here and you're going to get less noise um, inside of this material. Note that that will make this take longer. You can also jump over into your compositor right here. One thing you want to do with your compositor is you want to go ahead and enable this backdrop right here. And if you don't have anything that shows up in your background, so I'm going to move this back up. But if you don't have anything that shows up in your background, um, what you want to start by doing is just running a quick render of your image like this. But notice how this is kind of noisy up in here. However, what you can do is you can come in here and do a shift A and just add a denoise right here and just plug this in. So then when you render this, it's going to use the denoiser in order to uh, denoise that image. So once you do that, you can just do a render, render image right here. Notice how you're not getting as much noise in here anymore. So that's going to be a lot faster than um, trying to do it with your number of samples inside of Eevee, but you can do that either way. But then one other thing that we may want to do is let's say, for example, that we wanted to have multiple different material types, right? So what I want to do is I want to add this glass material to my glass library or my, my material library, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this clear glass and I'm just going to mark it as an asset. But then let's say that I also, in addition to wanting this to be a clear glass right here and we want to jump into our current file at the moment but we've got our clear glass right here and actually I'm going to change the naming so these all get grouped together so we're going to do glass clear underscore EV but let's say we also wanted there to be a colored glass so something that's got maybe like a blue tint or a gray tint what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this over here and with this material right here I'm going to make it unique but then I can also jump into my shader editor on this one, and I can change the color by changing the base color of my principal BSDF. So if I wanted this to be like a bluer glass, for example, I could just do this right here in order to do that. So now this is going to be more of a blue color as opposed to this other one over here, which is a uh, kind of a gray color or just a clear color. But um, just so you can see that a little bit better, I'll go ahead and make this backdrop lighter like this, but notice how this one is now blue. And so I could just rename this one Glass Blue Eevee. And then I could do the same thing again, move it over, make it unique, and this one I'm going to make a gray glass. So I'm just going to come in here and create kind of more of a grayish material right here. So notice how this is going to be grayer inside of my scene right here. But then I can just right click and I can mark that one as an asset. And so I can mark all of these as assets and save them inside of this file right here. So now I've got my glass materials 
Well then, then I could save this file in my assets folder and be able to access them quickly later. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions or what other kinds of materials you'd like to create. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.